Okay guys, we're gonna uh, continue on with the Minuteman series of videos. Appreciate your uh, patience. These videos are taking a long time because, first of all, there's a lot of information to cover. It not only has to deal with physical things, right, but also the mindset of the Minuteman. And, to be honest with you, um, I am rebuilding some of my own Minuteman kit as I go as well because I don't have everything that I used to and there's some modern things that are better than things that we used to have a long time ago. So, um, and then some things I just haven't got to yet, right? So I just went ahead and erased the whiteboard from the last video, which I talked about the dream I had about possible nuclear event. It's the only thing that I could think of that it could have been I could have been shown, you know, that could cause that kind of devastation. Anyway, so uh, an upcoming. What we're going to have upcoming is, is I'm going to discuss all these things. Some of you guys with other channels, you could zoom in on this. You could get your own ideas, right? And then you can give your own takes on your channel, right? So anyway, we'll be talking about personal kit. I know I've done a couple of little videos talking about personal kit a little bit here and there. But these, these will be into the little intricacies of uniforms, your uniform, what's going, going to go in your pockets possibly, the belt kit, what's in the pouches, organization, uh, your main rucksack, which is your house, right? Uh, use of the main compartment and the pockets on the main rucksack. I'm going to delve into my radio kit, okay? Uh, you're going to be, we're going to be looking at your actual radio transceiver, which is a transmitter receiver, right? Um, batteries for your radio, including charging system, okay? This is something that a lot of times we tend to overlook, you know, what if there's an EMP, how are we going to charge our stuff, you know, I mean, we're going to have to make some Easter eggs up, if we don't have, if we haven't already, make up some Easter eggs of EMP proof containers to where we could store some of these essentials until that day comes that we need them, right? And an EMP is a possibility. Definitely a, po a possibility. Easy way to uh, to knock out the grid, right? Oh, there's a wasp. Got the wacken. Okay. Comes with summer, right? He fell in this stuff here somewhere. Anyway. If he revives, I'll get him. So anyway, uh, EMP is is definitely a possibility. What better way to to uh, <clears throat> to deal with things other than take the grid out? Oh, he's over there on the window again. I didn't get him hard enough, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get that sucker. Yeah, he's gonna die right now. Yeah. Dead now. Yeah. What better way to, to cripple an enemy than take out their grid, right? So I think that's a very real possibility. <clears throat> That'll soften up a target, right? You take out their grid, softens them up, and then you hit them hard. Okay? <clears throat> Back in the old days, you know, with the swords, a lot of times on your battle sword, 
you had a double-edged sword and one side was quite sharp and the other side was not real sharp. It was a little bit on the dull side. And what they would do, the technique was to break the bone with the dull side. So they, they'd come down in one stroke and break, break the bone and then they'd come around with the other side with the real sharp side and then it would help it to sever okay that that's just one uh, technique that I had heard of with the uh, with the double-edged swords <clears throat> may not be true for all people but uh, I remember reading that about about somebody a long time ago some group of people that's how they did their swords up but it makes sense you soften them up and then you go in for the finishing you know the finishing blow so anyway uh, we'll talk about weapons system in in your magazines and your and your resupply in relation to your kit okay your rucksack and your belt kit and all that sort of thing we'll talk about that a little bit all right and uh, most of that's pretty self-explanatory in my opinion however <clears throat> these videos are geared towards somebody that may not know anything or they may be there may be somebody watching that's former military and they'll be yep yeah, I know that already Oh, that's a good idea. You know, I mean, because everybody can learn from everybody else. If you think that you know everything, you don't. Nobody knows everything. you got to be able to bring yourself down and say, yeah, I don't know everything. i got a good grasp on everything, but I don't know everything, and I can always learn more. you got to be humble. you got to take yourself down to that level to where you can always glean something new. Oh, I like that. Um, I do it a different way, and actually I like this way better. I'm, I'm going to switch to that, you know. I mean, sometimes that happens, guys. And I'm not saying it's going to happen with me or happen with you, but it could happen with somebody. Okay? Talk about navigation stuff a little bit. Uh medical stuff a little bit. This is all in relation to your Minuteman kit. Okay? When we finally get done with all the Minuteman series, then I'm going to put together the Land Nav series. Alright? We'll just start getting into all the little intricacies of the Land Nav stuff. You should have an MGRS map for your area. If you do not have an MGRS map for your area, you need to get one. Okay, and one twenty-five thousandths. Okay, and you go to my topo. My topo makes them. You just show them the area that you want. You take say I want MGRS. I want it one twenty-five thousand scale. And you know I want this type. I want the. I, I want this and I want that. You, you know, you can have your your choices of the matter, right? And then uh, and they will make it for you and ship it out, and it's like 20 bucks, okay? So you can get yourself an MGRS map for your area. We'll talk about uh, all that stuff when we get to those land nav videos, right? There's a million land nav videos out there. But I'll make up some land nav videos, and I'll give you some of my little tips and tricks. <sighs> anyway, tips and tricks, right? Everybody's got them. <laughs> okay, so uh, in these upcoming Minuteman videos, we'll discuss your navigational kit, some of your medical stuff. You got to remember that. Uh, 
it, your your blowout kit is designed for your paramedic, not not for you to be messing with. So when you go down, if you go down, your medic, hopefully you have one, will come open your blowout kit and use it on you to stabilize you. Okay? That's what that's for. Stabilize you to get you stable to where get you some even better medical attention. Now, in a minute man scenario, man, most people just do not have the logistical support for that. It's probably going to be a lot of people who will just die, right? Myself included. Uh, now, if it gets to that. Now, <clears throat> with me, I have nobody. So, I'll pack it out for a paramedic. I'll pack it out for a paramedic. But, uh, in a GP pouch, I will probably just have some basics to patch myself up the best I can. Try to keep myself alive. And then I'll leave that blowout pouch for the paramedics. Right. If I am so lucky as to have someone to work on me. <clears throat> Not everybody's got people, you know. So we'll discuss your uh, personal shelter options. We'll discuss food. Uh, we will discuss water. We will discuss fire because you may have to use fire. And we will discuss signaling, okay, in relation to different scenarios and stuff. All that will go with this. That's coming up in the videos ahead, all right? Some of this stuff I'm building upon right now. Uh, like I still need a few bit of medical supplies. I don't have everything. I got, I got most everything, but I need a few other things. You know, I've got like chest seals and quick clots and, you know, uh, crinkle, crinkle gauze and all that sort of stuff. But there are a few other little things that I need to go into my blowout kit. Um, signaling. I need to make myself a self up a VS panel, you know, I'm not going to lie, I don't have one, not now, haven't had one in years, it went away, with, I, I've lost a few things over the years, so, yeah, in this last minute and a half or so, I'm going to show you something here, I have had this for years, I got this when I was a boy, now, in the 1960s, there was a TV show called Combat, right, so, it lasted a couple of seasons, I don't know, two, four seasons, something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> this is a toy. I'm bringing this up because I'm going to use this as a prop as a prop in some upcoming videos when I go out and, you know, do some camo stuff, right? Because we are on YouTube and everything. We want to keep all this rated G, right? So... It still works. Anyway, I was ahead of the head of the 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 rest of everybody, you know, with time in my mind, and I I didn't I didn't like the all black, right? I thought I don't know about that. My brother got one too. I it's five boys in my family, right? Most of us are dead, but my one brother he got a machine gun toy. Anyways, his has been long gone, <laughs> but I still got this one. But anyway, what I was saying is it's got old olive drab green I painted on here in different spots, you know, trying to, you know, make it blend in a little bit better when we were fighting Invisible Wars. But I'm going to be using this as a little prop in some upcoming videos. I'm not going to shoot it or anything on camera. You know, but uh, it does make a good little prop. But if you never saw that TV series Combat, go check it out, man. Catch you later.